Number three, and most importantly, they misunderstood why they hate us. This is a key issue. The question is, why did they attack us on September 11th? Why do they hate us? There are two possible answers. They hate us because of who we are, or they hate us because of our policies. Those are the only two possible answers, okay? We, of course, were not going to say they hated us because of our policies in the wake of September 11th, because if they hated us because of our policies, then we, in part, would have been to blame, would have been to blame for what happened on September 11th. So we had to tell the story that they hated us because of who we are. They hate our democratic values. They hate the fact that we treat women as equals and so forth and so on. You know the litany of charges. The truth is there is a huge amount of survey data on this. There is a huge amount of anecdotal evidence on this. And they don't hate us because of who we are. They hate us because of our policies. Okay. But we said they hate us because of who we are. Right. Now think about this. Remember the Bush Doctrine. What was the Bush Doctrine all about? The Bush Doctrine was all about going into the Middle East and turning countries like Iraq into democracies. It was all about speeding up the Fukuyama process, right? In other words, what we were saying is, if they hate us because of who we are, we can't change who we are, so we're going to change who they are. We're going to make them look like us. I was adamantly opposed to the Iraq war, as many of you know, and I have many conservative friends, and I used to say to them in the run-up to the war, how can conservatives like you support this war? And they would say, why aren't you supporting this war, right? You're a conservative. And I'd say, anybody who's got a conservative bone in their body should be opposed to this whole operation because it's social engineering on a grand scale. This is one of the most radical foreign policy endeavors I've ever seen in my life. The idea that a bunch of white people are going to come across the Atlantic Ocean and do massive social engineering in the Arab and Islamic world at the end of a rifle barrel? That's a conservative policy? <laughs> Not on the planet I come from. Right? This is, you know, nutty, right? But, but again, if you have come to the conclusion that it's not our policies and you do not want to change our policies and instead you believe it's due to the fact that they hate democracy and who we are, then you change who they are. And that's what the Bush doctrine was all about. This is a fundamental mistake. What they really hated, right, was number one, the fact that we had troops in Saudi Arabia People in the Arab and Islamic world do not like us occupying their territory. So, of course, we now have troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. There was no Al-Qaeda problem in Iraq until we went in there. Now there's our Al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia, right? They hate us because of sanctions on Iraq in the 1990s that killed probably about 500,000 innocent Iraqis. They hate us because of our support for Israel and its occupation of the Palestinian territories, right? They hate us because we have supported all these thuggish governments in the Middle East for decades. Barack Obama pretends like we're embracing democracy, like we're this great friend of democracy in the Middle East. Who's he kidding? We've been supporting these thugs. We helped put many of them in power. We've kept them there for years. We've been no friend of democracy in the Middle East. One of the principal reasons there's no democracy in the Middle East is the United States of America. Everybody knows that. Well, the people in that region don't like our policies. You can disagree with them, but they don't like the policies. And actually, many of them like the United States and like American values. Anyway, so we misread the threat. Second is we did not understand the limits of 